Welcome to the Boss Up Babe radio show, helping babes show up, boss up, and thrive. With number one best selling author, global influencer, and ultimate boss babe, Carissa Adkins. Carissa is a health and wellness expert and CEO of the 365 Daily Hustle. Carissa helps mompreneurs and career focused women boss up and reclaim their healthiest life. She is a pro at cutting through the BS and creating massive breakthroughs that help women create healthy routines and habits that facilitate personal and professional growth. Are you ready to reclaim your best life, take action, and be a badass boss babe? Let's get to it. Hello, hello. If you are listening or watching this today, welcome. It's your favorite Boss Up Babe, Carissa Atkins, and you are listening to the Boss Up Babe radio show. Now, before I dive in with my amazing guests, might I say, um, I just have a quick ask, a quick minor favor that's going to take 10 seconds of your life today. So, Um, Some of you know this, some of you don't, but I'm competing in the world's largest online fitness competition. And now more than ever, do I need your support in securing my place in the quarterfinal rounds. And because this is an online event, how they find their winner is of course based on online votes. So I'm asking you today to listen to this uh, show (laughs) and then take a moment to just quickly go on um, the link, go to my website, 365dailyhustle.com and you will be able to um, cast your free daily vote for me today. It's also BOGO day. So that's, um, you can buy one vote and it gets me two votes. That's awesome. All the proceeds of course go to the wounded warriors. So help a boss babe out and go vote for me today. I'd love to move on to the next round. Round. But anyway, sorry, Clara, shameless plug there. Um, That's okay. I got my vote in already. So I, I just thank work. you, thank you, thank you. Oh, goodness. Well, today I am here with boss babe Clara Capano. I already mentioned that she's amazing. You've probably read her bio. If you haven't already, go check that out. But Clara is an international speaker, she's a badass trainer, right? She is a coach, a best selling author, she's a mama, she's a busy, busy boss babe, just like all of you. And she is super committed to helping women in business gain clarity and confidence so that they can take back their time and reach their goals. Hello, if you're listening, that is so amazing. Uh, Claire and I, um, we've known each other for a while. We actually partnered up on a a, a now an international best-selling mm-hmm. book um, right when COVID hit. So I like to say that it's our COVID baby um, that we kind of you know grew our relationship relationship. But really at the end of the day, you guys, Claire is amazing. She provides real no BS type strategies and tools that help women gain immediate success and traction while they are, you know, rising up the scales in their businesses. So Clara, she's the host of the Working Women's Channel. She is an amazing boss babe. Clara, welcome to the Boss Up Babe radio show. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, you know, we had our COVID baby and You know, one of the things I think that really bonded you and I together is we're both really good at cutting through the BS and getting (laughs) to the results. And yeah, we get, we get shit done when we work together, don't we? We do. We do. My favorite kind of work is getting it done quick so that I can go have fun uh, because life is way too short. Um, But you guys, you all know that I know and that I believe that every woman has a story. We all have a journey that we've been on. And I believe that we all are here on this earth for a specific purpose. Clara is, of course, to help, you know, empower and inspire women all across the globe, whether it's on a stage, in a book, or coaching, and mine too, but we all experience setbacks. We all have hardships and struggles. And as women, it's our job to either rise above our situation or to just be okay with living a mediocre life. And Claire, I don't know about you, but I don't do well in that mediocre zone. That is for sure. That is (laughs) for sure. (laughs) So 
bossing up, you guys, if, if you're catching the show for the first time, bossing up takes courage. And we're going to talk a little bit about what bossing up looks like, but it takes courage and it takes strength and just the willingness to change. So my first question for you, Clara, is what does the word boss up mean to you? Like what first comes to mind? Yeah. And, you know, I think you hit it on the head is that word courage. It's understanding that no matter where you are, you got to go and you got to grab that ring. You know, I think about when you were a kid and you were at the park and they have the monkey bars, you know, and you were on them and you're grabbing at those rings. But the only way to go forward is you have to let go of the ones behind you. Mm -hmm. And bossing up means that, you know, you're not going to live in the fear and that you're going to keep reaching for those next steps, you know, and having the, you know, the faith, whatever that means to you, having the courage, being bold and just taking the chances and trusting your own intuition on the way. Yeah. So many people, I think that that's a big one. So many people have forgotten to trust their own intuition, their own gut, mm -hmm. their own body. I see it in health. I'm sure you see it in, in like business and, sure. and just like what to do. Um, I think that do you, what are your thoughts on is bossing up a habit? Do you think that it can be a habit? Yes. Um, I do think it can be a habit because I think, you know, everything can be a habit. And I think the idea is it all starts with the vision. You know, and what I really work with a lot of women in business on first is coming up with the vision of who it is they want to become. Mm. And when you start to get that vision in of who it is you want to become, you know, that's the vision of the boss up babe that you want to be. But then it's coming to the next step of, okay, then what are the habits and the disciplines I need to start adopting to get me there? You know, and I, I love what Eleanor Roosevelt had the quote of do something that scares you every day. Well, that's bossing up in a nutshell right yeah. there is yeah. every day. And so that's a habit. A habit is doing something every day that scares you. So it is, it's again, knowing the things that you need to do. Yeah. And I think that that's huge. If you're listening and you're like trying to overcome this, some sort of fearful moment or a scary moment, maybe it's the first time going into a gym and you're like, no, just kidding. Not today. Maybe it's like, I just want to leave my corporate job behind to start my business. No, not today. All it takes is baby action steps, mm -hmm. you know, to get to that end result. And I love how you first paint the vision of what that client wants to see. Uh, we're going to definitely talk strategies because I think that that alone is a golden nugget if you're listening, you need to envision what you want first and give yourself permission to think big, like think like a boss, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, so I'm, now that we know what bossing up means to you and, and everyone's got a different perspective on it. And I love listening to that. Tell me about a time in your life or maybe a most recent boss up moment that you literally was like, Ooh, this is scary, but I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Tell me about a time like that. Well, you know, I would say it was when I took the leap to start my own consulting business. I had been in the field of real estate for many years and I was well on my way. I had a great job with amazing company, had the 401k, had the health benefits, all of those things. But I knew internally it was not my calling mm -hmm. and it was really scary to take that leap. I was in my mid thirties. I was a single mom, you know, I had built my reputation and to step away from all of that to starting at square one with no income for several months, you know, no 401k, no insurance, no more corporate card. I loved my corporate card, you know, and, and doing all of those things. And so, you know, but, and I remember it was my mom who was one of the first boss up babes that I knew, you know, and her telling me, you know, there's never going to be a right time. And if this is what you truly want to do, you know, lay the foundation. So I didn't just jump overnight. I didn't have a savings account, which I worked to build, but then I used that and, you know, and it was terrifying and mm -hmm. it was exhilarating at the same time, you yeah. know, and it was again, knowing the habits that I needed to do each and every day. And even when I had to go to the bank account and pull all my money out of the savings account, I only had to do that for about four months because I followed the path. I followed the strategy. So I fell in love with the goal, but I worked the strategy and that's mm -hmm. sort of what got me there. And that's what helped me, you know, to make sure I was bossing up is again, the vision of what I was doing and then the strategy to know what I needed to do. 
Yeah, that was a writer downer, right? Like, and I'm going to re rewatch this and listen to it because I'm like, that's that's brilliant. I'm going to write that down. You can use it as a hashtag. I love it. So, well, like anything like that, it's, you know, we have similar backgrounds coming from corporate. I remember like what I did in the woman's bathroom before I went in and I was like, I quit, right? I got to leave. I got to put my notice in. Was there something specific in that moment that like you had to do that gave you that oomph to just do it? You know, it, a lot of it was my son. You know, he was he was young at the time. He was about three at the time. And I was just on such the hamster wheel because for me, I had programmed myself that success for me was all about checking off the boxes. It was about having the title. It was about the bank account. It was about the car and all of those things. And, you know, it was him taking the phone out of my hand one night saying, mommy, you're not paying attention to me. I had to, you know, I had to be, it was a moment. It was a, a, a real defining moment of, you know, am I going to stay on this hamster wheel or am I going to make the changes I need to make? Because I wasn't really being present, even yeah. though I did have the job and I checked off all the boxes. I really didn't have anything because I was alone and I was empty and I was running, you know, so fast that this whole vision of success, I was getting further and further away from. So I think, you know, that was a defining moment for me to say something has to change and I needed to take control back. And that's yeah. what I needed to do to take control back. I want to talk hamster wheel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I want to talk hamster wheel. And it's funny how like one major moment can like make you stop it in the tracks. And you're like, I mean, the ha if you've seen mm -hmm. it, like they go, 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 go. Oh, right? yeah. That's like that's that feeling of like, why am I working so dang hard? But I don't, I'm too busy to mm -hmm. even think and stop about what it is that I yep. want. And for you, the moment was your son taking the phone and he's like, mama, you're not even present right now. Like, listen to me, be with me. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to go back to that hamster wheel because I think so many women are on that, that hustle, that grind, yeah. right? And, and that's like, I don't know about you, but my hustle made me like, I did, like, I, I thought my worth was in my hustle, right? Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to outwork the man. I'm going to outwork everybody. I know I'm going to be the best marketing. I'm going to take on more titles and more positions and more, 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 more until I hit this moment of like, oh my, I'm irritable. Like when I get home, I'm, my health is slipping. Everything that's important to me is gone. Like, you, you know, you had, I lost a husband over that, that type of hustle mentality. So what is that? What would you equivalent like the hustle and the hamster wheel to nowadays? Like, well, you know, I think it again goes back to that vision. And the big thing for me is I had to redefine success and what success mm -hmm. meant for me um, because I had the health issues. You know, I had my first burnout breakdown moment in my 20s, you know, where I was working 14, 16 hours a day, you know, drinking too much, you know, not liking who I looked at in the mirror and just going, going, going. But again, I had all the check boxes, you know, and so I got through that. And then after Nicholas was born, you know, one of the things that I tell in my signature talk is, you know, most women, when they have their child, they take several weeks off, you know, 12 weeks off for maternity leave. I took three weeks because a few days after he was born, I got a promotion and I couldn't not take the promotion. Right. Because it was another you know, I had to do it. And so then I got into the thing. And again, I was battling postpartum, but I couldn't mm -hmm. tell anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I was completely falling apart. I remember driving to work and it was about an hour commute each way, just bawling my eyes out. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't tell anybody yeah. because that was counterproductive to my vision of success. Right. Because that meant I couldn't do it all. Right. And so I think for me, what I learned on my journey is that you know, success isn't about the check boxes. It's not about the fancy cars and the titles and all of those. And so one of the things that I do at the end of the day is I redefine success. So success to me boils down to three simple things. I ask myself at the end of the day, did I show love today? Did I inspire today? And did I contribute positively to the world today? Those are the three things that really matter in all areas of my life. And if I can show up doing those things, it was a successful day. And if I focus on that being my guidepost, that being my real job, everything else falls into place. Yeah. And that's, that's sort of really what good. I use now, you know, and I, I do, I still work hard. I still hustle, but I hustle in the confines of what really matters. You know, yes. I had to get clear on who my target audience was. I had to get clear that it's okay to say no. I had to get real clear that self-care 
which isn't just working out, but it's again, anything that brings (laughs) you joy was mandatory, you know? And I really had to, had to lose everything Mm -hmm. in order to really see what I really needed and what really was success for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that if ladies, if you're like, okay, maybe I should redefine what success, same thing with health, right? So many people think that that's like some skinny body on a scale and like blah, like um, it's that not. Is not health, by the way, uh, we do need to redefine that as a whole, you know, like uh, a whole country. Um, but I think if you're trying to redefine and really look at yourself and a lot of this is self-awareness and just thinking what is important to me, right? Claire mentioned in a, in a different way, but I always say priorities, like she's, she knows her priorities priorities Mm -hmm. now. Um, But I think it's really cool, like thinking, what are the three things that are most important to me? And for her, that was, you know, giving back and inspiration and love and everything then just everything will else fall into place. So if you're trying to find like what redefine yours, just pick the things that, you know, you that mean the most to you. Would you agree Mm -hmm. with that, Clara? Absolutely. And, you know, you do. And I think the thing that you have to understand is your why is yours. Mm -hmm. And Stop comparing it to other people because my why is different than it was when I was 20 and didn't have a son and was single. You know, it's different than it is now and that's okay. And, you know, it was having this complete and utter shift and breakdown that really brought me on my path because, Mm. you know, this is what makes me passionate about going out there and speaking and doing this. It's, you know, sure, I love making money. Who doesn't like making money? But it's again, what does that mean? I mean, I have an obligation because I... I saw both sides of the coin and Mm -hmm. I see so many women out there, just like you do, that need help, Mm -hmm. you know, that are really struggling to fit into this mold of what they think they need to do, because that's either what society is saying. That's what their family has told them. That's what their internal mind is saying. And I know that I can help them. I know that I can help them look at things differently without doing too much. And I know this is something you really pride yourself on too, is you can get to that level of success that you define. You don't Mm -hmm. have to change your life dramatically. So many times people think, well, if I wanna go from point A to point B, I have to completely scrap it all. And that's not the case. So again, it's really bringing it down to very manageable things, but really getting clear on that vision. And I just, I love helping women in business, you know, stand in their power. And again, learn how to forgive themselves, learn how to love themselves, learn how to set boundaries because that shows respect for yourself. Yeah. And, you know, it's really empowering, not just to me, but I mean, to know that, you know, we can help each other because we do grow so much stronger when we come together. Oh, and that just segues perfect to, of course, you guys know, I love, you know, giving my, my guests the opportunity to share a little bit about what they do and how they help women. So Claire did a fantastic job. I didn't even have to ask her that, but really quickly before we move on to BO, cause we're talking about BO today for the last half of the show. And you guys, I am not talking about the stinky stench coming from your armpits, especially if you're in the gym right now, we're talking burnout, baby. And burnout is Ugh, it's gross. It leaves you stressed out, overwhelmed, unmotivated in your life. And we're going to talk about the strategies and like how to spot BO before it happens. Um, I can't help but laugh at that. But before we do that, Clara, tell me where our audience, where can our listeners find you if they're like, um, I need this coach in my life? Yeah, well, and I appreciate that so much. Um, you know, the best thing to do is to go to my website, which is just claracapano.com. You can get all your clarity right there. And, you know, Carissa, um, because I love you so much and what you're doing, I also want to offer a free gift to all of your viewers and listeners. Okay. And, you know, part of burnout is, again, standing in our boundaries, which we'll talk about. But it all stems from the inability for many of us to say no. no. So I actually have a free ebook that they can get on my okay. website and it's called The Art of Saying No. So I would love to have them go and just download that. Again, it's perfectly free and they can get some strategies. And then right now I am launching a brand new online course and it's super affordable because again, I really want to make sure women are taking advantage of this. Mm-hmm. And my whole thing is helping women make smart choices. So the course is called Smart Women, Smart Choices, and it really gives women the the tools and the strategies to take control back of their life and start showing up as the CEO, not just in their business life, but the CEO of their own personal life. So they can get information on that in my other courses there as well. And if you could just um, tell me your website address again, kind of spell it out for us. 
You got it. It's claracapano.com. So it's C-L-A-R-A and then C-A-P-A-N-O.com. Beautiful. All right, you guys, there's no reason why you cannot boss up right now and go get that ebook, The Art of Saying No. All you people pleasers out there, all you busy mamas that are just way over your heads making cookies and all that kind of stuff. The Art of Saying No is going to help you, right? I always like to say, uh, when you can say no, you can then really say yes to yourself and your best life. So um, yeah. that was beautiful. And thank you for gifting that to everyone. Whoop, whoop. My and consider, pleasure. you guys, consider that smart women course. Um, I'm so excited. I'm, I get to join in next time. So that's going to be cool. Um, but anyways, let's talk BO because we've got, a, you know, so oh, a little yeah. bit of time left and I really want to give the audience what they came here for. And that is to talk, you know, BO. So burnout, what are some signs of burnout? Because half the time I've realized most women don't know they're experiencing burnout. They're like, oh, what? Yeah, because we, we think like... we have it all under control. Yeah. So I think one of the signs is when you think you have it all under control. <laughs> when you do think you have it all under control, you usually are covering for, you know, not having it. So, you know, I think, you know, everybody operates differently. Like I know for me, you have to start listening to sort of your fight or flight. So mm -hmm. for me, I know when I am, you know, facing burnout, all I want to do is go crawl in bed and put the covers over my head and disappear. Mm -hmm. So that's a time for me to say, okay, I need to listen to it. For mm -hmm. some people, it manifests in health. Um, it could yeah. be, you know, back pain. It could be ulcers. So again, you really have to start, you know, listening to your body and really paying attention to how you are showing up. So I would just really encourage people to just take sort of a, a, a mental, you know, journal or kind of just a little mental checkup. How are you showing up? One of the things that I really do, because I want to make sure that I show up as the best version of myself every day, and I cannot show up as, as the best version of myself if I'm burned out. And what it means to show up as the best version of myself is to make sure that I am set, ready to go with the energy, the mm -hmm. mindset, and the, you know, know it all where I'm going to serve at the highest level possible. Mm -hmm. So here's mm -hmm. how you find out who that person is. We have all had a moment in our life where we were, we'll call it in the zone. You know, you left an appointment, you left a presentation, you got off the phone and you're like, I nailed it. Yeah. That's when you're bossing up. So I want everybody to think of that time. And when you're thinking of that time, I want you to write down five words that you would use to describe yourself in that moment. Mm. So for me, when I think about being in the zone, the five words that describe myself are energized, prepared, passionate, motivating, and genuine. Those five words represent Clara when Clara is at her best. So I check in with those five words every morning. That's part of my morning routine. Because if I am not there, I got to start talking about it. And if I notice yeah. that I am not there several days in a row, that's a key indicator that I might be burning out. And Love you want to, you know, pay attention to that because if you get too far away from that core version of who you are when you're at your best, you're not going to be present. You're not going to be showing up the right way. And you're definitely not going to be serving your clients, your family, your friends, yourself. Yeah. You know, and that's, yeah. that's, really that's where your kids about. are like, Hey, screaming, pay attention, mom, please, please, please. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Ugh, 30 minutes goes way too fast. It I will does. tell you, we could have had a 10 hour conversation about burnout. I'm telling you what. So biggest key to success. So, you know, I want to back it up because I don't want to rush that. If you guys, that was a great tip, right? To understand, just know where you're at in your life and what the signs that your body says when you are experiencing high levels of stress, which is on that verge of like burnout zone. You know, personally, I will dive into more work thinking that that's what I can control. So when I become the workaholic, I'm like, whoo, that's my sign. I got to slow down. So it's your job and your job alone to realize what it is that you do, you know, what your body says so that you can spot burnout. And then the second tip for her, if that's you, is to imagine yourself the best version of you, the most vibrant version of you, bossing up on every level, write down five words, and, and then every morning just set the intention and connect, if, if that's what I heard you write, Claire. She mm -hmm. makes it every day part of her life to check in with herself, to, to set the intention of who she wants to be and how she's going to show up for today. So what is one thing that one has been the biggest key to your success? you know, trust, mm. trust, 
network, do what you love. Again, I mean, sh honestly, show up. Show, show up on. every day to live that day. Don't waste a day because you don't get it back. Hmm. So show up. Yeah. Show up. If you're listening, it's time to show up. And if you're listening today thinking, wow, I need to show up and I have no idea how to do it, where to start, please reach out to Clara or myself. She is an amazing boss babe that can help you boss up in your life on every level. If you are looking to get fitter, healthier, cleaner, you can always reach out to me. I love helping girls boss up and become the healthiest versions of themselves. So Clara, before I let you go, I just kind of, I love leaving the show with, um, you know, one final thought. How can you, what's the last word or the last image you want to leave in someone else's brain before we let them go? You know, one of my favorite quotes is life happens at the level of movement, not words. So don't just say you're going to boss up. Let's actually do it. Yeah, you guys, the action is so important on that business plan. All right, you guys, Clara, thank you so much for being thank on you. the Boss of Babe show. I wish you lots of success. I know our journey does not stop here um, because we have become great friends and I look forward to our future collaborations with each other. So ladies, boss babes, queens and mamas, if you're listening to today's show and you enjoyed it, please share the show with your friends. You can listen on all of your favorite streaming devices. If you even caught the last five minutes, I encourage you to go back, of course, and watch the full episode. Y'all stay thriving, stay hustling and stay in clarity. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Boss Up Babe radio show with Carissa Adkins, bringing you tangible tips and expert coaching advice to help you boss up and get healthy. Tune in every second and fourth Tuesday at 1230 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com for interviews with industry leaders and powerhouse boss babes that will empower you to take action and live your best life. If you're ready to boss up and work with Carissa in one of her transformative group coaching programs, visit 365dailyhustle.com.